It's not brain surgery, a phrase that connotates the cutting edge of science, yet it can be argued that brain surgery is one of the oldest medical procedures in the world. Trepanation is surgery on the skull to expose the dura mater, but it was always the brain, or whatever demons or spirits that dwell within, that were the true objective. The practice can be traced back some 8,000 years in Europe, Siberia, China, and the Mesoamericas. In a burial site in France that dates back to 6500 BC, 40 of the 120 skulls unearthed had been trepanned. The tools used in these early operations varied widely from sharpened rocks to obsidian blades. Over the ages, these would be replaced with bronze or steel saws or scalpels, while some cultures would scrape holes into the skull using glass. There were legitimate uses for the procedure. It was done oft times to alleviate the pressures of internal swelling after a head injury. It was also used to remove bits of bone or blood clots after a severe cranial wound and was the original method of access to perform lobotomies. But for every justified trepanning, there was a seemingly endless number of frivolous surgeries done. In his 400 BC treatise on wounds of the head, Hippocrates recommended the procedure for any minor bump on the head or to cure such ills as epilepsy, melancholy, or mental illness. Indeed, many surgeons saw trepanning as a way to release the evil spirits that would cause aberrant behavior. Many researchers have suggested that ancient man may have fashioned the resected discs into amulets to ward off future demonic possessions. During the Renaissance, a new theory came forth of a stone residing within the brain that gave forth to madness and dementia. Removal of the stone was thought to prevent mental illness. Many paintings depicted the surgical attempts to locate this non-existent stone. Dr. John Clark was the first physician known to perform a trepanation in the American colonies, but the procedure was slowly phased out of common use in the early 20th century and has been rebranded as a craniotomy to distance itself from its brutal history. But the story doesn't end there. Enter the 1960s and the rise of psychedelics in the goal of expanding one's consciousness. Dutch librarian Bart Hughes postulated that trepanation was the ticket to a permanent high. He wrote a monograph in 1962 titled Homo Sapiens Erectus, cited by advocates of self-trepanation, in which he contends that children have a higher state of consciousness because their skulls are not fully closed. At one point, John Lennon approached him, interested in having the procedure done on himself. On January the 9th, 1965, as a publicity stunt, Hughes trepanned his own head. This inspired his followers, most notably a former lover and filmmaker named Amanda Fielding and her longtime partner, Joey Mellon. Fielding filmed her own self-trepanning, for which she used a standard drill in the film Heartbeat in the Brain. Fielding also assisted Mellon in two attempts at trepanation, the second of which landed him in the hospital where he was reprimanded severely and sent for psychiatric evaluation. He tried a third time and described the experience as such. After some time, there was an ominous sounding slurp and the sound of bubbling. I drew the trepan out and the gurgling continued. It sounded like air bubbles running under the skull as they were pressed out. I looked at the trepan and there was a bit of bone in it. At last! As recently as 2000, two men from Cedar City, Utah were prosecuted for practicing medicine without a license after they performed a trepanation on an elderly English woman to treat her chronic fatigue syndrome and depression. As far as trepanation in the modern day is concerned, you could say the law isn't very open-minded.